President Kufuado honored as AU Gender Champion for 2017 in Ethiopia. Many displaced by Five African countries launch new multinational force to fight armed groups in the Sahel region. Good evening and many thanks for joining us here on GTV and GBC24 for this very special Republic Day holiday edition of the news. My name is Joyce Bawa Mukhtari. And I am Mustafa Hamid. Stay with us as we bring you news from across the country and beyond in the next 60 minutes. The United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA, has honored President Akufuado as the AU Gender Champion for 2017. The Chairman of the African Union, Guinea's President, Professor Alpha Kondi, who is also chairman of the African Union, said the honor is in recognition of President Akufuado's effort in promoting gender equality on the continent. In the 29th ordinary session of the AU dovetails the good works of his predecessors. This is the second time the president is attending AU high-level meeting in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, the first one in the latter part of January this year. President Akufuado after his first meeting, was appointed the chairperson of the AU's Committee on Gender and Development by the union's chairperson, President Alpha Conde, Announcing the recognition of President Akufuado in fighting for gender equality, the AU chairperson, President Alpha Conde, described Ghana's president as someone who strongly believes in gender equality as evidenced in his appointments at both cabinet and district levels. This year's meetings of the AU are on the theme harnessing the demographic dividend through investment in the youth. The union believes focusing on the youth will propel the development of the continent in an expedite manner. The Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Ms. Amina Mohammed, called on African leaders to find sustainable jobs for the 226 million youth of Africa, particularly those between the ages of 15 and 24. President Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe also presented a check for $1 million towards the development of African Union Foundation. Other issues being discussed include institutional reforms of the AU, roadmap of practical steps to silence guns in Africa by 2020, the Continental Free Trade Area CFTA, which is expected to be implemented in the latter part of this year, and the implementation of Agenda 2063, which is the strategic framework for the continent over the next 50 years. worth $1 million to raise money for the African Union Foundation to help end the donor dependency syndrome. President Robert Mugabe donated 300 cattle from his head and other Zimbabweans doubled the number in contribution to what they call the noble cause. A downpour at Dunkwa Onofin in the Upper Dentra East district of the central region has rendered over a thousand people homeless and destroyed property worth thousands of Ghana cities. The cause of the flood, according to NADMO, is traceable to illegal mining activities around the Ofin River and other water bodies. People have also built on waterways. The Assemblyman for Compound Electoral Area, Mr. Sally, appealed to government to find a lasting solution to this annual problem. The chief of Dunkwon Ofin, Nana Obinriakon, who was also affected, appealed to the government to come to their aid. My dear, yes, yes, Abai. Any uh, minister for land and uh, natural resources, sir, Nada Roma. I'm running to Omo Yedumo. Hano, Omo Madia, so Omo Bema Wamo. Aye, I had moto. Aye, Bebo Wamo, Omo Bidi Bebo Omo Machine. Omo Machine Media Friends, you know me. He said illegal mining activities are still ongoing in the area. He called on the government to flush out the illegal miners who are bent on destroying the environment through their activities. Affected areas are Accra Town, Sofokrum, Bidieso, Dankro, Railway Quarters, and Presentiase. The Dunkwa Government Hospital was also affected. Meanwhile, the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, 
together with the municipal assembly and other stakeholders, are finding a place to shelter the affected inhabitants. To deepen the decentralization process in Ghana, the sub-district structures are to be strengthened to effective, effectively play their roles. For now, these structures, the urban, town, area, and zonal unit committees are virtually non-functioning, affecting performance in the metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies. This came up during an orientation program for heads of decentralized agencies in Accra. My community, uh, even the Nkoko itself hasn't got a pipe bond system. So we still depend on uh, boreholes and, and, and uh, the, sometimes even the open rivers. Education is a, is a major problem. When I hit the ground there, uh, one of the first things that faced me was because of the rainy season, some schools had their roofs blown off. That's what tidal waves, it's been a yearly occurrence and um, you know, it's a natural disaster. But then the process has begun for a relocation. These challenges are not limited to these areas. Across the country, unemployment, lack of shelter and other amenities, poor sanitation and weak structures seem to be more evident at the local levels. The role of the Metropolitan, Municipal and District Assemblies is to foster development in line with central government policies and programs, as well as respond to the specific needs of the various communities. One district, one factory, zongo development, job creation, industrialization and rapid transformation are some of the social interventions soon to kick off under the NPP administration. The five-day orientation is to equip the officers with the requisite skills and knowledge on best ways of translating set objectives into concrete results and lead decentralization governance effectively. Our local government democratic structures have been laid with a view to enhancing peace and stability of our country. What we are left with is to deepen the decentralization and have a solid local government system that will facilitate the eradication of poverty, scholar, disease, and guarantee an enhanced living standard for all our people. Just like we complain about central government not, giving, not allowing us to work, the sub who are complaining that the district level is not allowing them to work. So just as we want resources to be transferred from the center to the district, you also have to go further by also transferring resources to the sub to enable them to work so that we can hold them responsible and accountable. Participants will be taking through financial management, resource mobilization, procurement, common fund application, local government service, environmental management and ICT. Galam C or illegal mining, now a national issue, has also been incorporated into the study lineup. Some participants shared their impressions with GBC24. This orientation program is going to help us to sharpen our skills and knowledge so that we can administer the district the way we should administer it. This is an opportunity for us to sharpen our skills, to give us what we need to know in terms of collaboration with the traditional authorities, with the communities. We try to uh, identify ourselves that the people that we are in to serve, we serve them very well. About 15 MMDAs in the country are still without a metropolitan, municipal and district chief executive. Government is designing a framework to reinvigorate research and development. The Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Kwabna Frimpombwatin, disclosed this at the Developing Excellence in Leadership Training and Science Conference held in Accra. The Developing Excellence in Leadership Training and Science Program, DELTAS, is a scheme initiated by the Wellcome Trust in partnership with Alliance for Accelerating Excellence in Science in Africa and other partners to support the African-led development. The DELTAS program was laid on a fundamental framework of the Africa Change Theory with specific focus on achieving world-class output in terms of scientific quality, training the next generation of scientific leaders, linking research to policy, 
and building robust and vibrant research environment in Africa. According to the directors of Deltas Africa, this can be achieved by supporting the development of scientific leaders in Africa through masters, PhD and postdoctoral fellowships and building the capacity to produce world-class research that addresses Africa's health and research priorities. Eleven programs involving 54 institutions in 21 African countries are being funded through the Deltas Africa program. The Accra conference is aimed at reviewing how policymakers, scientists and researchers can work closely to support research development in Africa. The Executive Director of African Academy of Sciences, Mr. Thomas Kariuku, said the DELTAS initiative is very critical in the development of science and research on the continent. DELTAS is arguably the largest community of health researchers now on the continent. By the time the 11 program directors are through with the recruitment of the DELTAS fellows, uh, we will have a community of close to 1,300 researchers across more than 30 countries, with more than 55 collaborating institutions in Africa, and with something like 25 or more external institutions and partners in Europe and North America. The University of Ghana is one of the institutions benefiting from the DELTAS initiative. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Ebenezer Odro Owusu, said the initiative will complement its efforts to develop science and research in Ghana and Africa as a whole. One of the most profound impacts of the Wabic Deltas program at the university has been its postdoctoral training program. The program has attracted some of the most talented young African scientists who graduated with PhDs in the last few years. If this trend is sustained, we may well be on our way to reversing the brain drain that has so severely hampered the quality of science on the continent. The Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Kwabina Frimpombwating, outlined measures that the government is putting in place to support science, research and development. So far, the amount of money dedicated to research and development is just about 0.025% of GDP. But our president, Nana Adudankwe Kufuado, has promised to increase it to 1% in accordance with what AU is saying. And I think he will not even stop there. In future, when we get some more money, he will increase it. So that is my hope. And uh, that is the hope of all of us, that when we get 1% of GDP into research and development, we'll make uh, headway. The director of the West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens, Mr. Gordon Awandari, welcomed government's decision to increase the support for research and development in Ghana and hoped that it will go a long way to support the sector. 120 females have passed out after two months training in electronics. The program falls under the Female Professionals in Electronics project, which provides women with the requisite technical skills to enable them to have equal access to the job market and opportunities in male-dominated fields. Market is saturated with consumer electronics. Thus, training to fix such items when they break down responds to a market demand. As a middle-income economy, there's high demand for electronic appliances and lifestyle products. Sales outlets and service stations for these devices continue to spring up everywhere in the country. It was for this reason that the Council for Technical Vocational Education and Training, COTVET, in collaboration with GIZ and other key partners, launched the Corporate Gender Strategy in 2013. It seeks to expand access to vocational training for girls in male-dominated careers. Under the Female Professionals in Electronics, 120 females from four schools underwent a two-month training program. The schools included Pentecost Vocational Training Center, Accra Girls Vocational Institute, Don Bosco Vocational Institute, all in the Greater Accra region, and CYO Technical and Vocational Institute at Sovier in the Volta region. The Pando Municipal Chief Executive, Mr. Elvis Jampo, commended the female students for their decision to venture into an area perceived to be a preserve for males. He urged the youth not to shy away from technical and vocational education as it provides ready, marketable and employable skills. The board chairman of the CYO Technical and Vocational Institute at Sovi in the Volta region, Reverend Monsignor Anthony Konu, 
said attention should be geared towards vocational and technical education if Ghana is to achieve a rapid industrial growth. He urged Ghanaian youth to acquire some level of technical skills in addition to their arts certificates to be more versatile. The technical advisor in charge of employment for sustainable development at GIZ, Mrs. Afia Gbenyo, highlighted employment prospects and possible job life after the training program. Some of them want to take their certificate to others like higher education. Some of course have, want to set up their own businesses which we encourage and others also have the opportunity to join the army as technicians. Honorable Joyce Baha Mukhtari, today we are not in a political banter. <laughs> How do you feel that today we are collaborating rather than disagreeing? Well, I think it's particularly insightful, it's different, it's more relaxed. And of course, I can remember that you are my brother and have a good laugh this evening. It's not so easy being a news broadcaster, is it? Absolutely, it's, it's a difficult Relatively matter. Relatively stressful, trying to ensure that you can see properly. And I mean, you can tell that I'm struggling. And I think I speak a little bit faster than your screen rolls. <laughs> anyway, viewers, we'll be back after this break. <laughs> Still to come in this bulletin, Kumase Asante Kotoko wins 2017 President's Cup and Sudan to extend a unilateral ceasefire in three conflict zones. Please stay with us. There's more news ahead. And so we still have in studio our special guest readers, Madam. Joyce Bawa Mukhtari and Mr. Mustafa Hamid. My name is Maurice Ubita. I'll do the business side of the news. Now, Ghana is currently ranked 154 out of 189 countries on the 2016 World Bank Doing Business Trading Across Borders Indicator. A survey by the USAID on various ports attributed this to the lack of compliance with the WTO Trade Facilitation Agreement and the cumbersome procedures for moving goods and services. Bureaucratic delays and red tape poses a burden for moving goods across borders for traders. The simplification, modernization and harmonization of export and import processes has therefore emerged as an important issue for the world trading system. To achieve this, the World Trade Organization members WTO concluded negotiations at the 2013 Bali Ministerial Conference on the Landmark Trade Facilitation Agreement, which entered into force on February 2017, following its ratification by two-thirds of the WTO membership. Ghana was the 95th country to sign the Trade Facilitation Agreement. The agreement contains provisions for expediting the movement, release and clearance of goods, including goods in transit. It also sets out measures for effective cooperation between customs and other appropriate authorities on trade facilitation and customs compliance issues. However, a survey by USAID indicates that unofficial fees at the various ports in the country end up in private pockets and that hinders trade and revenue generation. The U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Mr. Robert Jackson, said Ghana needs to address the challenges associated with import, export and transit trade. I think the key point that we're making is that you can take these fees and eliminate the duplication. Why do you need multiple services doing the same thing? Why do you need multiple customs agents doing the same thing? Limit the number of inspections, figure out exactly what you're doing, and comply with the World Trade Organization agreement that, that Ghana is, has become a party to. Eliminate fees that are generating revenue, focus on what services are needed to protect the public and protect um, everyone's interests, like the work that Ghana Standards is doing, like the work that the Food and Drug Administration is doing. Focus on that and we can make it much more attractive to import and export goods from here and Ghana can be a real trading center for the region. The director in charge of revenue policy division at the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Anthony Jajra, said government is taking steps to address the challenges in the import, export and transit trade. Uh, transit fees is something to custom charges. 
it could be nuisance, which you must think through, because now the trade facilitation agreement says that we must not charge those things. So these are things government will take decisions on. Because if the whole world has agreed that if goods pass through your country, so like I can, a, a good is going to Burkina Faso, which is landlocked, Mali, which is landlocked, and the trade facilitation agreement says that don't charge your neighbor these fees, then Ghana must obey. The U.S. government pledged to assist Ghana with technical know-how to address the challenges in the trade sector. Let's go to Nigeria, where the extractive industry has so far disclosed $500 billion to the federal government. This is the first time since the inception of the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. Let's go to the interbank market, where the dollar is trading at 4 cities, 36 pesos. The euro going for 4 cities, 97 pesos. We also bring you latest prices of major commodities on the international market. News are continuous after this break. Stay. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. 16-year-old Clement Abbey has been diagnosed with a rare congenital disease which restricts blood carrying oxygen to other parts of the body. According to a cardiothoracic surgeon at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Innocent Ajamli, Clement will need 94,000 Ghana cities for further medical attention. The pulmonary artery is an essential part of the heart that transports blood to other parts of the body. When a child is born with a tiny or virtually non-existent pulmonary artery, he is said to have pulmonary atresia. This defect is usually associated with hole in heart, another congenital heart disease. According to cardiothoracic surgeon at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Innocent Azamli, this rare congenital heart disease occurs in seven children per 100,000 live babies. Clement Abe is 16 year old from one student of Yehoshua JHS. Due to his condition, he is easily fatigued, has dark limbs, and is stunted. It's not a very simple uh, congenital heart disease, quite a complex one. And as part of the problems of this, this child does not get enough oxygen in his blood for the various parts of the body which the, we call the cells, for them to grow and hence leading to the growth of the various parts of the body. This child needs an artificial tube to replace it. And then the hole that we are calling the VSD will also be closed. The diameter of the pulmonary artery varies with age. For a newborn, those, those uh, in the first year of life, you are looking at between uh, about uh, 1.5 a centimeters to about uh, two centimeters or that is usually in the first year of life then as they grow it increases in size so for this particular child you are looking at a size of between two and three uh, centimeters the surgery to be carried out at a facility in india according to dr zamli does not come cheap 
there are some that are made from cadavers. Cadavers mean dead human beings. So some of the big blood vessels we, we, in uh, human beings who are dead can be harvested and treated and then put in for this child. Uh, some centers, you may, they may use a pig, that of a pig, to, 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 to do it. And then in some instances, they use that of a, a cow. They also have very big blood vessels that can be used. And in some instances, artificial materials are used to create this uh, type of tube. His condition notwithstanding, Clement still nurtures his dream. I want to be a doctor. Patient's Ama is his mother. When I was delivered of my son, I was told he has hernia. I was then transferred to the Kolobu Teaching Hospital. It was there I was told that he had been diagnosed with a rare hole in heart, which can only be treated abroad. I am a single mother and I can't afford it. The estimated cost of the surgery is 94,000 Ghana cities. Clement's mother is therefore appealing for support. Donations can be sent to the Laboni branch of the Universal Merchant Bank, account name Ama Patients, stroke TF Abbey Clement, account number 0242-3379-89016 or mobile money number 054-061-7140. No amount will be regarded as too small. The National Health Insurance Scheme Secretariat in the Western Region has organized a blood donation exercise at Second D. It was part of the Republic Day celebration. The exercise brought together NHIA staff from the various offices within Western Region to voluntarily donate blood to help NHIA's clients who may be in need of blood. It was organized in collaboration with the Takrade Hospital where the donated blood would be kept at their blood bank. The NHRA staff also used the opportunity to deliberate on how to move the scheme forward. The regional director of the National Health Insurance Authority, Mrs. Edna Jalbafo, said that the exercise forms part of the NHRS corporate social responsibility to help the health delivery system to save lives in the region. Beyond our services or providing the paying for the cost of healthcare, we think we can also do something that is donate blood to save our clients. We are also told that as we donate this blood, those who take part has uh, very good health implications for them. We are told that they can even reduce weight. For those of us who are even so fat, we think that through this exercise, we can reduce weight. Some of the staff who spoke to GBC24 encouraged the public to donate blood to save lives. People are out there who are in need of blood and we also have to help them. Blood can never be manufactured and it's, it can only come from us. So please and please again, those out there should kindly help us so that we can get blood at the blood bank. You know, we always want more blood at the blood banks to help the hospital. So I think it's very good we are doing this. The NHIA is optimistic that at the end of the exercise, it will meet the targeted pints of blood to save lives. On the other side, On the other side of the break, we will bring you stories from beyond our borders. Hello, good evening. Let's talk sports. I'm Theophila Sampa going to the Garden City where Kumasiya Sante Kotoko have won this year's President's Cup. He beat Accra Hearts of Folk by four goals to one on penalties at the Baba Yara Sports Stadium. It was a repeat from last year's as the Porcupine Warriors pipped their opponents through the penalty spot after both teams failed 
to hit the target in a stipulated 90 minutes. We'll bring you some highlights of the game played. Making a three for Kotoko, Jackson Owusu. Felix Sanan. Can he stop this one? Akofi. And he does it beautifully. Can he score here? He doesn't place the ball. Sadiq Adams. Oh! Absolutely fantastic! But that! From Sadiq Adams! Silver yeah. medal here. Jose Ajiman. UBA President Cup winners. And they are indeed. Were the champions after twice winning on penalties against Accra Hart to Pope. So a finished goalless in stoppage time at the Bavaria Stadium. And now the champions, Kumasi Asan Tegodoko. Thanks a lot. And have a wonderful time. Going to tell my word, yeah, the Saddle College Old Boys Association, the Santa Claus, beat perennial rivals in fancy theme Old Boys Association MOBA in the fourth Juna Golf Challenge Tournament at the Tema Country Golf Club. The match talked about golf tournament between the old boys of Infancy Pim School MOBA and Adesado College Santa came off at the Tema Country Golf Club. Adesco boys who were thrilling to one level the scores after the two day event by winning 11 points to five. Officials of the two teams shared their experience. We just want to say a big congratulations to um, arch rivals um, Adesado College. Um, unfortunately, um, the school lost. Um, and we live to fight another day. We'll be here next year to defend, um, to beat them. So it's, um, it's a draw now. We've won twice and they've also won um, two times. So the next one um, is all or nothing. So we're looking forward to next year. For the first time we decided to play over two days. The first day was supposed to be a group game and the second day a singles game. And uh, at the end of the first day, it was square 10-10. So they came out, they thought they were going to win. Fortunately, I just could show them what we were made of. We completely whitewashed them by 11 to 5. We look uh, forward to more competitive game. We hope to retain this cap for Cape's next year. The encounter was sponsored by Mobus Ghana, Samsung, Vodafone, and Nolad Insurance Ghana. Senior stars are winners of the third edition of the National Chief Imams Ramadan Cup. They beat 2 to 11 side by four goals to three on penalties after a 1 1 scoreline in regulation time. <laughs> The Ramadan Cup Football Fiesta is a one-day gala competition which is named in honor of the National Chief Imam Sheikh Usman Nuru Sharabutu. It brings together various Zungo communities to compete in a football gala as part of activities marking the end of Ramadan every year and to promote unity among the youth in the Zungo communities. In all, 16 teams participated in the third edition, with 12 teams from Accra and two teams each from the central and eastern regions. Medina opened the competition by beating two-time winners as Sherman to proceed to the finals. The tournament's headline sponsor, the Royal Bank, presented new jerseys to be used for the final game. Tudu picked the white jersey, whilst Medina picked the blue. The final game was keenly contested. Tudu scored the opener in the first half from a penalty. In the dying embers of the game, Medina restored parity courtesy Samuel Osai's goal. Encounter ended 1-1. The game proceeded to penalties. Medina 
were 4-3 victors after Tudu's fourth penalty taker missed. Outstanding players were presented with products from Nasco Electronics and latest foam. Medina playmaker Daniel Jangba was named the best player of the tournament. Derek Sasraku of Tudu emerged the top scorer with three goals in five matches. Medina goalkeeper Eli Nati won the goalkeeper of the tournament accolade. Officials were happy at the turn of events. We started with uh, eight teams in the first edition two years ago. We expanded it to 12 teams last year for the second edition. And this year it has been 16 teams uh, with a team from uh, Central Region and uh, two teams from the Eastern Region. Uh, we, we want to expand it further so that uh, more of our Zongo communities can be part of it. His Eminence, the National Chief Imam, he epitomizes unity, he epitomizes togetherness, he epitomizes discipline. And that's what all the team supporters, everybody, uh, we've demonstrated here today. We are grateful to everyone. Our major objective for coming into this event is to help promote peace, unity amongst all of us, especially the Muslim community. And to see that this event has ended successfully without any event, any problem, we are very happy and we thank God and Allah for everything that has happened today. For finishing second, Tudu had a cash prize of 1,000 Ghana cities and medals. After receiving the gold medals and a cash prize of 2,000 Ghana cities, the national chief imam, Sheikh Osman Nuru Sharbutu, presented the trophy to the 2017 champions Medina. Congratulations! Final Germany are winners of the 2017 edition of the FIFA Confederations Cup. This is the first time the world champions are winning the competition. They beat Chile by go to nil. That's all for sports. Good evening. Welcome to the Act segment brought to you kind Ketsi Carbell. My name is Valerie Danso. Artists will showcase their work at the Orderly Disorderly Exhibition as students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. The entertainment team caught up with a few of them. The exhibition saw paintings, installations, cartoon designs and graffiti. Bright Aquae's work exaggerates popular iconic personalities into cartoon characters who metaphorically become archetypes of broader attitude traits of just anybody. Bright shares his reason for putting up this type of work. I, I, I'm trying to encourage people to ask questions like bothering around the relationship Ghana has with some of these foreign countries because a lot of them tend to be problematic. Uh, a lot of these supposed bilateral agreements and trade agreements and uh, collaborations turn out to be problematic in the, in the future. So I'm trying to draw people's attention to some of these things. Kevin Abankwa work shows hyper-realistic paintings of subjects, holding locally made lanterns with tints and wicks. He explained where he got his inspiration. It's about um, the electricity crisis in Ghana. And then these are everyday people. I see them and I talk to them about the whole project. And then um, I, I invite them into my studio, take shots of them, and then transfer them into oil paintings like this. I'm being inspired by um, a lot of artists, people um, I watch and I look up to, learn from them um, to get motivations to be able to come out with these paintings I make. They're actually oil paintings. Daniel Mensa views his painting as an articulation of variance in dealing with one strand pull from hip-hop culture. The work is spread on walls as an installation or mural. 
He describes the connection with his audience. Outside the country, to do graffiti is illegal, so the boys do it overnight. But yeah, I want people to enjoy the feeling of doing graffiti using a spray can. And mostly my target ideas or audience are the youth, you see. And I focus more about music, hip-hop, hip-life music, because I believe a lot of the youth learn from there, the way they dress, the way they think, the way they speak. Everything comes from hip-hop. Let me put it like that, because, for example, the word nigger, sorry to say, I heard from hip hop and it has a long history with blacks. You see, so there's a lot I feel influence um, our society. So through my work, I'm trying to like explore graffiti and show my own side of how music, hip hop and hip life affect the whole society. The exhibition explores works of over 100 artists. Enough. I say where is It's amazing how much fun people can have dancing at their workplace just to entertain themselves. At the 37 lorry station, GPC 24 chanced upon some bus conductors or trotro mates as we call them who never wanted to miss the opportunity of dancing to tunes at the bus terminal. Many activities can coil up in one setting, like a lorry station. Our cameras captured these young bus conductors at the 37 lorry station having fun in their own style. Passerby who could not look on without catching a glimpse of the fun filled moment at the lorry station joined in the merrymaking. Finally, this young girl who had other duties to attend to could not hold on to her dancing shoes. For GBC 24, Ofuri Wadako reporting. That's all in the segment. Brought to you, Kanketi Kabel. Have a good evening. As Ghana marks Republic Day holiday today, join us on our major news on GBC24 and GTV at 7 p.m. as our special holiday news presenters, the Honorable Minister for Information, Mr. Mustafa Hamid, and the Honorable Former Deputy Minister for Transport, Mrs. Joyce Bao Mukhtari, bring you the news from across the country. Land of freedom, soils of the brave, and the sweat of the That's all for this special Republic Day holiday edition of the news here on GBC 24 and GTV. But before we go, a quick reminder of the headlines. The United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA, has honored President Kufuado as the AU Gender Champion for 2017. The chairman of the African Union, Guinea's president, Professor Alpha Conde, said the honor is in recognition of President Akufuado's efforts in promoting gender equality on the continent. <laughs> Torrential rains have unsettled residents in parts of the central region. Dunkwa on Ofin is the worst hit as thousands of residents are forced out of their homes by flash waters. Um, Joyce, how has it been with you today? Well, thank you very much. I think it was actually quite a pleasure. I particularly enjoyed this uh, 
new job of mine and I maybe I would consider it in the near Maybe future. when the news anchors <laughs> announce a strike, I would call you so well, we can feel it. Since you are the sector minister <laughs> and you are very well evenly supported here, I'm sure I'd very much like to acquiesce to your request. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you very much for having us. We'll see you God willing another time.